Hello, I'm Sham, a cloud engineer here at the AWS office in Cape Town. Today, I'm going to show you how to make your AWS Lambda function item potent to prevent inconsistencies in your application. Let's get started. To make a Lambda function item potent, we must design the function logic to correctly handle duplicate input events. The code must validate inputs and identify whether an event was previously processed. Let's look at the following example. Here we have a Lambda function that takes in a JSON event containing a transaction ID and an item. Extract the value of a unique attribute of the input event, such as a transaction ID. Next, we use a conditional expression to put the item potent key into our DynamoDB table. We then wrap this in a try-catch block that will tell us whether the provided transaction ID already exists within our DynamoDB table. To test this, let's configure a new test event. Enter the event name. Edit the JSON event to include the transaction ID and item. Select Invoke. From the Amazon CloudWatch logs, we can see that the item was added to the DynamoDB table. To confirm this, let's look at our DynamoDB table. Navigate to the DynamoDB console. Select Explore Items. Select your table. As we can see, the item containing our transaction ID was inserted into our DynamoDB table. Now, to test whether our function is indeed item potent, let's return to the Lambda function and test the function with the same event object. From the Amazon CloudWatch logs, we can see that the item already exists within our table and no action was taken. Note that your application functionality determines the best way to write your code. Here are some best practices to follow. Plan for item potency before you begin to develop your applications. To avoid retry loops, make sure that duplicate events end without errors. Configure a sufficient Lambda timeout for the full process to complete. Test and optimize the function with realistic load scenarios. Use a scalable, high-throughput data store, such as DynamoDB, for session data. When you follow these best practices, you can make sure that your Lambda functions are safely idempotent, and you can avoid issues such as inconsistent data, throttling, or increased latency from duplicate processing. So now you know how to make your Lambda function idempotent to prevent inconsistencies and data loss in your application. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.